So, folks, we now know that Tuesday is the big day when old Donnie is finally getting dragged in. But, you know, what's really interesting is there's still a lot of details outstanding. We don't know the full scope of everything, and we likely won't know it all until that day. But late last night, early this morning, we all got a big favor from Michael Cohen, who released some shocking new details and insight into not only the indictment, but also also the criminal and you know scared terrified mindset of Donald Trump it is some of the most riveting stuff you're gonna see I want to play you a couple clips it's a bit of a journey we're going to go through it it really showcases a man that understands how important this is how scared Trump is but also how this is still a very dangerous moment and everyone needs to be vigilant especially people like him who are directly involved in the process and may be put at risk because God knows what the Trumpers will do to try and free their man and what Trump will try to do to spur those people to do evil on his behalf. Here's the first clip through and through one of the best few minutes of Michael Cohen tearing down Trump you will ever see. Um, Donald Trump's attorneys were blindsided by this announcement to the point where Donald Trump was actually praising the grand jury and saying, look, I have new respect for this grand jury. They're not going to indict me at all. And the obviously the AG's office was very stealthy about making sure that they had no idea that it was coming, even though he previously predicted he was going to get indicted. Do you think that he was genuinely shocked and really believed that he'd beaten it? Yeah, because, again, Donald lives in Donald's head and the fact that you had people like Takapina and you had people like Bob Costello and you had a whole slew of other pundits on this station as well as other stations telling you that when, for example, Bob Costello um, went in to testify, all of a sudden he's now impeached my credibility. Well, obviously we know that that's not true. In fact, nothing that he said clearly changed anybody's mind. However, they have the same thing with Takapina. He comes out there and he says, well, after Donald, of course, puts it out there that he's going to get indicted last Tuesday, rakes in another two and a half million dollars uh, in campaign donations. And then you have guys like Takapina running around and saying there's more than a 50 50 chance that Alvin Bragg is going to drop this case altogether, that Michael Cohen's testimony has now been um, basically disparaged to the extent that there is no more case and more than 50 percent likely that Alvin Bragg is going to drop the case. They do this because they think that by playing, you know, the media game, that they're appealing to the court of public opinion, that that has any bearing on a court of law. And we all know that it doesn't. You know, um, Donald Trump is now bragging that he's raised something like four million dollars. He's trying to he's sort of out there with a lot of bravado as if he's not afraid at all. But we now know that this is going to be a real booking. He's going to get his fingerprints taken. He's going to go through what you had to go through. He's no, not, go through not exactly. Not Biden. exactly the same. Not exactly the Tell same. Me. And, well, it's going to be very different. I mean, he is the former president of the United States, and there is a yeah. certain deference. You know, I was handcuffed. Um, don't forget, I went through that processing twice, second time with the unconstitutional remand that, you know, the court uh, over at the uh, 500 Pearl Street decided that it was important not only that I should be handcuffed, but shackled as well. I mean, it's amazing that I could be handcuffed, shackled. I mean, why don't they just put me in an outfit like Hannibal Lecter simply because the president got his pecker pulled by a porn star? And I'm not referring to David Pecker either. Wow. And so you're, it, it, well, that is an excellent point, because I think there is this sense that it used to be your job to help Donald Trump maintain this impunity. Right. And he's never really had to face the music, really, for the things that he's done. But to your point, he was able to use his Justice Department is who prosecuted you. So he's been able to manipulate prosecutors to get his way. And now we can't. You know this man. Do you think he's genuinely afraid? Because, as you said, it won't be the same, but he's still going to face a version of what regular people have to deal with. Yeah, it goes way beyond scared uh, or way beyond afraid. He's petrified. He could put on whatever fake bravado that he wants, knowing Donald Trump, as we all do, who is not just forget about the fact he's a germaphobe. Uh, and so the fact that he's even going to be in this area is going to sort of make his skin crawl at the same time. He's now being held accountable. And I think Neil Katyal turned around and said it. It's the first time in his life that the guy is actually being held accountable for his own dirty deeds. And 
Look, our district attorney, Alvin Bragg, dropped a 2,000 pound dirty deed indictment right onto this guy's lap of accountability. And it's not something that he knows how to deal with. And he's really looking for somebody to figure out how to get rid of that, you know, 2,000 pound weight of accountability that's sitting on his legs. And it's just not possible. Now he has to, every time he closes his eyes, he knows that he's one minute, one hour, one day closer to having to go into, you know, the 80 Center Street and to be processed. You know, um, Donald Trump has a whole cadre of political figures who are really violating the Constitution to try to defend him, making all sorts of threatening noises at uh, the district attorney. Um, but you testified, uh, and I will never forget this testimony, about the fact that Donald Trump would never leave office peacefully, that there would never be a peaceful transfer of power. That did happen. Knowing him again as you do, how concerned should we be, quite frankly, um, given what happened on January 6th and given the rhetoric that's coming out of his truth so social pretend Twitter, how concerned should we be about the security of this DA, the security of our country and the courthouse, um, and really places around the country where there are Trump supporters who might be pretty angry on Tuesday? <laughs> well, you know, Joy, I, I appreciate um, what you're saying. The only problem is that everybody seems to leave out that there are a whole slew of witnesses like myself that are going to be testifying against Donald. And what Donald, you know, look, I, I appreciate the issue that is now confronting the district attorney. But, you know, he's got police security around him all the time. There's a whole slew of witnesses that will be brought in. And what Donald Trump is doing is he's using that mob language, that mob code of that speech where he doesn't really say it. But what he's doing is he's sending two messages. The first message is you witness, you need to be concerned because I have a slew of millions of people that I'm speaking to. And then, of course, the second half of that code goes to those individuals for them to do or think that this is what Donald Trump wants you to do without Donald Trump actually coming out and saying it. And that's part of his superpower. Yeah. Uh, and are you concerned for your safety? I'm concerned for my safety every day. I'm concerned. That's a big one. Like that's the, that's fantastic, right? And I want to just relay this second one. This second one is also really important because it showcases how he is ready to do the job. A lot of people weren't sure how this was going to go down, and Cohen just released maybe one of the biggest details yet. And say, based on your questioning, I know, and I know you can't talk about what happens inside the grand jury. That this is that you are not the only witness in this case. You may be the star witness. You're not the only witness in this case by any means. Thank goodness for that. Yes, I am not the only witness. Are you ready for this cross examination? Oh, absolutely. Look, do you think it could be any worse than the Republicans during the House Oversight Committee hearing? Nine hours with about five hours of it being lambasted by Republicans who didn't want to ask me a single question about their supreme leader. All they did is follow the message. And that's something that I had done for over 10 years with Donald. You follow the message that he wants. And that's what got me in trouble. You may also remember I said it was either to Mark Meadows, Jim Jordan, or both of them. I know what you guys are doing because I know the play. In fact, I wrote the playbook. So look at what's happened to me. It's not good. And what happened to me will ultimately happen to you. And that's actually what's happening right now. One of the defenses here is likely to be this is a, wasn't about the election at all. This was just Donald Trump paying, trying to keep a personal matter private. Right. Um, the documents will speak for themselves. The documents? Yes. So not just your testimony? No. And it's also corroborating testimony, but it's documents. I promise you, this team under Alvin Bragg is as good as the team under Mark Pomerantz and Carrie Dunn. And I didn't think I would ever come across a team as good as that. How do you expect these next several weeks and months now to go for you? Difficult, because part of the Trump playbook, I talk about it in, in Revenge, uh, all the time. what Donald Trump's playbook is all about is to disparage and to denigrate. And they're going to come at me every single day like what Joe Tacopina does, uh, like what Bob Costello did. They're going to try to attack my credibility day in and day out, thinking that they're winning the war, which is really his freedom, when you're not. In like he's ready. 
Like, there was like, you know, the confirmation about what exactly was going to happen. We didn't know. Now he's saying, I am ready to be cross-examined, which confirms that he is going to be on the stand top witness. There's always a chance that, you know, they used Cohen as a background guy, but didn't necessarily call him on the stand. We don't know exactly, right? But this is a big detail, a big confirmation of the indictment that Cohen is not just a background guy, but will be there. And it's also a confirmation of the details of Trump's mindset around the indictment. Because make no mistake, the narrative right now from Trump is that this is no big deal. I'm going to be fine. If anything, this helps me. I'm raising money. Uh, my polls are up in the Republican Party. Uh, this is going to make me look like even more innocent than I already am. But in his core, he knows this is devastating beyond the GOP primary. In his personal life, in his business life, in a general election, he knows he's screwed. And he's, as Cohen says, one minute, one hour, one second, one day, closer to an orange jumpsuit.